Good morning, everybody. All right, this is our Pear Deck code. Just like yesterday, we're gonna get started right away. Happy Friday. more minutes. We're going to get started. So we're going to get started here in like one more minute. <clears throat> Thank you. 
All right, let's get busy here. Good morning. Let me turn my computer so I can not be staring off in a space. All right, question of the day today. What are three things that you would like to take with you on the perfect picnic? Yesterday it was beautiful weather. It was a little chilly, but it was so pretty and I thought about a picnic. So what would you take with you on the perfect picnic? What would be in your back? Food, my mom, you put your mom in a basket? Just kidding. Melon sandwich and an apple. Cake, gotta be three things. <laughs> Just three kinds of cake. <laughs> Pineapple peaches and mangoes, pizza, water, and cookies. I feel like you guys have not been on a picnic before. Oh yeah, like ants and fry, fly spray. Sandwiches, zero Wi Fi donuts and video games. My lord, get outside. Here, dog would eat the food. I'm so sorry to hear that, AP. Terrible. Oh, a bathing suit. Mm. Those are some good ideas. I'm thinking if I went on a picnic, I would definitely want like a blanket or something to sit on. So chairs, you know, when you go on a picnic, you're outside. So unless there's a picnic table there, you're going to want a blanket. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. We got lots to do today. Um, Sorry about that. I, was, I just had to take a picture of something on my screen. So picnic, maybe we should do a picnic. It'd be a cool virtual end of the year thing, right? Like a virtual picnic. We could all eat outside. It'd be fun. Something to consider. All right, here is our collection so far of our calendar. So we have looked at a total of six days in May. We've looked at the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. We have this area of the outlined figure, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24, 24. We have the area of the colored region, which has changed. That one has not been the same, 24, 4, 26, 18, 8. We have the color, purple, green, purple, green, purple, green. And we started looking at some of the fractions. So 24 out of 24 was 1. 4 out of 24 was 1 sixth. 20 out of 24 was 5 sixths. Six out of 24 was one fourth. 18 out of 24 was three fourths. And I kind of highlighted there to show you that I was seeing a pattern. Um, so today, yesterday was the sixth. We had 24, eight green, and then we had the fraction one third. And so today I'm gonna ask you to predict, what do you think today's marker will show? So based off looking at this sheet, Purple, green, purple, green, purple, green. Yesterday was green. The area was 24. What do you think the area outline figure in the color will be? So here's our prediction. What will the color be today? What shape will it be? How many square units will be shaded? 
So I'm going to have you go ahead and make those three predictions, not just one. We're going to have a number one, a number two, and a number three. What are your three predictions? Will the color be, what shape will it be, and how many square units will be shaded? Purple, rectangle, and four will be shaded. Purple, 24, green. Purple, three by three. Purple, rectangle. Purple, square. Yes, Jay, it's green and it's gone. Purple, green, purple, green. Okay. And you think four units. So I'm just gonna go back to that calendar um, chart real quick so we can just take a second look. I think I agree that most of you, with most of you, when you say that it's going to be purple. So yesterday was green. So I'm thinking today will be purple, right? And then the area of the outline figure will probably be 24. That's what I'm thinking. But this is where I'm not sure. So it went 24, four, 26, 18, eight, there doesn't seem to be a pattern there. But when I look at the fraction, I feel like there's a little bit of a pattern. We start with the unit fraction, one sixth, then five sixths, that's like one away from a whole. One fourth, the unit fraction, and then three fourths, one away from the whole. One third, so yesterday was one third, so I'm thinking today will be two thirds. So if I could figure out what two thirds would be of the fraction or of the of 24, never divide by three, double it, right? So you could divide by three and then double it to find two thirds. I don't know, that's just my prediction. So I think it'll be 18, but we'll have to see. And as far as shape, I know the last couple of days, and I can just show you the calendar real quick because you guys actually haven't seen the whole calendar all together. Um, but I should probably pull it up on my computer first because I, I revealed today and tomorrow. So let me pull it up here so I don't give it away. Okay, let me flip these back over. And you can see. All right, so let me share my, put it on the screen now so you can see if you're on YouTube. So here is our calendar so far. They haven't all been rectangles, rectangle, square, and then we had this weird shape. Rectangle, weird shape, rectangle. So do we think it's gonna be a rectangle or a weird shape? All right. Let's go ahead and reveal um, and think about your prediction. It is a square. Look at that. So on this question, I'm asking you, what is the area of the colored region? I know that the outlined region is 24 because it's been 24, 24, 24. So I want to know what's the area of the purple? And what fraction of the outline portion is that? So we're trying to fill out our um, uh, 
calendar chart now. Tell me the area of that colored part. And then I want you to tell me the fraction. All right, I'm sorry that I'm looking over here, but it's too hard for me to be away from my desk. So I'm looking at the big screen here up on my TV. All right, four times six, four is 16. The area of the colored region is 16. I said 18, didn't I? Oh, my math is off. Good. Two thirds, 16 out of 24. Good. Nice job, you guys. Yeah, so look at this this rectangle or square, rectangle square. We're doing four by four to find the area we multiply. Four times four is 16. We could also count four plus four is eight, four plus four is eight, eight plus eight is 16. Treat it like an array, right? So we found the fraction or the, the area is 16. To make it into a fraction, we just say how much out of the total. So 16 out of 24. And then finally, we can simplify that fraction. So let's go ahead and fill in the seventh. We are going to do the eighth. And I think you're going to be quite surprised with what you're going to see here. So I'm not going to ask you to make a prediction on this one. So we still have the area was 24 on the outline, but we found that the area of the purple part was 16. So we say 16 out of 24. Now, how can I simplify that? Well, both of those numbers are even. So let's start by dividing by two. So 16 divided by two is eight. Eight times two is 16. 24 divided by two is 12. So eight twelfths would be another way to say that same fraction. I know that eight and 12 are still both even. So if I divide four or eight by two, I get four. 12 by two, I get six. Four and six are both even. So let me try again. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is three. There is nothing I can multiply by um, to get both of those numbers. So that is simplest form. So look at our pattern that we found. One whole, one six, five six. One fourth, three fourth. One third, two third. Kind of a cool little pattern that's going on. So I am gonna show you the eighth today, which is tomorrow's date. And I'm not gonna ask you to make a prediction because wait till you see this. What? We have completely changed our pattern now. So go ahead and try this one. See what the area of the color region is. I think the area of the outline portion is still the same, still 24. And then see if you can find the simplest form.
two times six is 12. So you're thinking 12 out of 24 <gasps> or half. Oh, good. I really think that fraction page helped you yesterday more than you know. I know you guys are all like, oh, so easy. I know, but just sometimes it helps to do that quick little review to remember about fractions. This is why it's so important for you to come to our small group. Um, so that's when we really get some one-on-one -on -one attention, right? Like that's when I'm calling on you and seeing what you know about things. It's just so important, especially with only a couple weeks left. So the UC is two, and then you counted this way, and that was six, and two times six is 12. So if we go to our calendar collector here, we've got five, eight is the date, 21, still 24. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Still the area is 24, but we found 12 colored orange instead of purple. We broke that pattern. So we said 12 out of 24. And most of us recognize right away that 12 is half of 24. But if you didn't, we could divide by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 24 divided by 2 is 12. Again, 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 12 divided by two is six. And even though three is an odd number, three can go into six. So three times one is three and three times two is six. Kind of divided differently there. Interesting, so I'm gonna highlight this a different color so we can come back to and see, is this, uh, what haven't I used yet? I used them all, I'll go back to green. Um, we'll see what the next day might be on Monday. I'll kind of remind you of this and then we'll, we'll go back to Monday. All right, guys, great job with the calendar this morning. Seems like we're getting a little bit better at area. Now I need you to turn to page 70 in your number corner student book. Seven zero. So this has been the thin. Page seven zero of your number corner student book, seven D. All right. All right, seven zero, bend the thin. So this is number one. It says look at the rectangles and fill in the table below. I'm actually gonna allow you to do this on your own. So I'm just gonna go through the directions and then you can work on it during your own time. It says, find the area of each rectangle outlined below and write it in the table. So A, find the area. B, shade in one sixth of the rectangle. Label each shaded region with its area. So one sixth, how much is one sixth? If the area is 24, how much is one sixth of 24? We'll do one together. What would the area of a region that represented five sixths of the rectangle write your answer in the table? Okay, so we've got three steps to do and we can keep coming back to this slide, but let's look at the actual rectangles. And like I said, we're gonna do this together. So, or number one together. So it says, what is the total area of the rectangle? The first one, total area. So let's find the area. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. So I have a six by three. I could even write my equation in the box. And what does six by three equal? 18, right? So I'm just gonna write an 18 and then a U with a two, which means unit squared. So my first box, total area of the rectangle, unit squared. Okay, now the bottom portion, I wish I could hide that somehow. Let's see here. Let me try making it full screen. 
five sixths of the rectangle. So first it wants you to find one sixth of the rectangle, and then it wants you to find, I see, five sixths. So it wants you to find one sixth so you can find five sixths, right? So this was 18 units squared. We found that by doing six times three. Now, if I'm looking for six and these are rows of six, right? That's six, 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 right? So if that's true, then I already have this separated into six. I just have to find five, six. So with your pencil, you would just take your pencil and count five groups of six. One, two, three, four, five. So if I shaded all of that, How much is five six the rectangle? So three, 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 three six is one six. And I have five of them. So we're kind of multiplying by five. Just on the top though. 15 is what I got. Our whole is 18. We're three short of that. I don't know. There it is. There we go. I won't let me go any further than that. Sorry. Cut me off. But so find the total area of the rectangle. Then the reason they wanted you to find one six is so you could find five six. You could kind of multiply to find that. Let's do one more together. So let's find the area of this figure. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is a six by six square. What is the area of that rectangle? I already see a row of six. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So how many would five be? If one is six, what's six times five? When you're looking for five, six, you know it's going to be one away, one group away from the whole. That might help a little bit. So I'm gonna let you give those a try on your own. There's nothing to fill in here on Pear Deck, okay? So just give those last two a try on your own, filling in that whole table. Don't worry about writing the one six anywhere. That's more for you to just figure out what five six is and shade it, okay? Number two says, imagine you were given a rectangle with 120 area. The area is 120. If you shaded one six of that rectangle, what would the area of the shaded region be? So imagine this is kind of extending your thinking. I'm gonna exit full screen real quick. This is kind of extending your thinking. Get rid of the zero. If I had this whole rectangle and inside was 120. And I remember I have groups of six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know how many go vertical or yeah, vertically. I only know that there's six in there somehow. So just like we did yesterday, we did this in our small groups. Take 120 and divide by six. That's going to give you your denominator. And then you'll be one group away from the whole. If you shaded five, six of the rectangle, what would it, well, it's gonna be the same denominator as above, only one away from the whole. Sorry, the one six was just one of those groups, right? This is kind of challenging, but I do want you to try it on your own. Maybe we'll go over the answers to this in our small group. All right, B, if you shaded, oh, we already did B, <laughs> okay. So you guys do that, number two, okay, on your own. And I wanna move on to my calendar collector because we're running out of time. I wanted you to participate in that today. So uh, rule number one, gotta pull up our 
calendar collector. Um, let's see, I think I have to go the long way to get this. So give me just a second to get the die, the four dies. Sorry, my computer's being slow. This is why I can't do it ahead of time because then it makes my computer really, really slow. All right, we're in number corner. It's May. And we are doing calendar collector. Oops, that was September. No, it wasn't. Maybe. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm going to zoom in and we're going to roll. I don't know how you're typing. You don't know what the roll is yet. Silly. All right, so you guys are going to solve this multiplication problem. Four times five. Four times five is what you should be typing in the paradox. Four times five. See how fast you can do it. Yeah, see, how are you typing numbers? You're going to skew our data. Erase your numbers. What is four times five? One person way out here. We're getting close there. Four times five. I see this cluster of people who are correct. There we go. Now we are two are out of range. So that means we have most people are there, are getting it. Some people are still not sure. Four times five is 20 nice job so on roll number two now you know don't type your number before you see the roll silly all right we're going to spin first and then we'll go to number slide number two five times four five times four so roll number two type your answer you're only typing a number <laughs> What is five times four? Four, five times four now. All right, let's see where we're at. Let me zoom in. Yeah, most of us said, hey, missing gets the same. Plenty. All right, roll number three. Seven times six. Roll number three is seven times six. I'm gonna leave that up so you can see it. Seven times six. What strategy do you have for solving sevens or sixes?
All right, I'm gonna go look at your number. Got a few that are out of range, but most of us, 11 of us are out of range, seven times six. So think of um, six times six and add one more or five times six and then add two more. So five times six is 30, six times two is 12, 12 plus 30 is 42. So you've got to have a strategy for solving these multiplication problems at this point, guys. We've got our test today. All right, two more to spin. Our toss is five times five. Five times five this time. All right, five times five. Nine are out of range, yikes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So we're just typing the number 25, count, skip count by fives. Come on, people. All right, last spin. Nine times nine. Rule number five is nine times nine. All right, let's reveal your answers here. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Holy crap. Some of you I think are just being silly at this point. That's not cool. Nine times nine is 81. Thank you for those of you who are staying on task. I appreciate you. All right, let's count our even and odds. We have one, two, three evens and two odds. I'm still seeing this pattern that our evens are more than our odds. And so I'm hoping that that uh, made you change your mind about, excuse me, about your prediction from yesterday. All right, guys, independent work for today. 
doing box number one. Test number two. I'm going to quickly walk you through how to find that. So if you could join me on YouTube, I'm going to walk you through that. Um, and I'm also going to um, show you what it looks like. Sorry, brain fart. So we're going to go to the classwork tab. Okay. Once we go to the Google Classroom, go to the classwork tab. This is where all your independent work is. So if you have trouble finding this at this point, you are in trouble. All right. So you're going to scroll down to math. You won't see all this gray stuff. That's for me. Okay. So you're going to click on this week. This week is a week 15, 5, 3 through 5, 7. And then I want you to click on view assignment. Now yours will look a little different than mine because I am not a student, but I am going to show you where it will be. So yours will pop straight to this page. Sometimes you'll have work up here. So if there was any Google slides um, or anything, you'd have to check up here for your work, okay? Um, Then you're going to scroll down and you should see a bunch of links to different things, the review, all of those student book pages you worked on throughout the week, your clever login, some multiplication games I asked you to practice this week. But the last thing there is the unit five assessment. Unit five assessment. So when you click on that, it should pop up and look like this. This weekend's Mother's Day, so I picked flowers. So don't forget to tell your mom you love her this weekend. All right, the first question is your name. That should be pretty easy. Although apparently it's kind of hard because some people have been typing the wrong name. Type your name, please. So I would type Mrs. Simmons or Ms. Dink. I don't even know. And then we would read through these problems. So if you look at this first one, it says matching. Read the word problem carefully and choose the equation that matches. Then solve. So we're doing a t-shirt costs $9 at the mall. A pair of shoes costs five times as much. What's the equation? Solve the equation. Read the word problem. What's the equation? Solve the equation. What's the equation? Solve the equation. What's the equation? Solve the equation. Okay. Darn, it won't let me go to the next page. So without answering. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Then just carefully read the highlighted in purple. That is the directions and the title of the section. Okay. So that is our assessment for this week. I believe it or not, still have one, two, three, four, five students who have not completed their multiplication and division checkpoint. This is a problem. I even gave you guys time during class to work on that. So I will be pulling you guys into breakout rooms today um, for, to, for you to finish that work, okay? All right, guys, I will see you in small groups very shortly. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.